Amen. Thank you for coming this morning. Let's all stand. We appreciate everybody on Facebook and YouTube turning in to us and listening. And we greatly appreciate it. These are well-known scriptures. One of my favorites. Yeah, preacher, you preach on it enough, it ought to be your favorite. Okay? You know where it's at? James chapter 3. James chapter 3 and verse 1. Say amen when you found it. Amen. Amen. That's 4. Amen. And that's 5, 6. Amen. Okay, it's getting there. The book of James chapter 3 and verse 1. Say amen when you found it. Amen. My brethren, he's talking to the church. My brethren, not, being not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. We mean the things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about for whole body. Behold also the ships which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hymn, whatsoever the governor listens. Even so the tongue is a little member. And boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it should defile the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Oh, you're listening. Amen. Of course, some was here this morning, and some were not. It is set on fire of hell. Let's pray. Our precious heavenly Father, we come to you. Lord, anoint me to bring forth thy word and write the divine word of truth. Not only give us ears to hear, but Lord, let us be doers of your word. Word as we are closing the end of this age and beginning the new one. Lord, help us. For I know we don't know the day nor the hour, but you've given us sounds are so close. Be nigh to the Lord. Of the coming of Jesus. Lord, help us. Help us to draw closer to you and give an ear to your words and be doers. And we ask it all in Jesus' name and the church says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can. I guess this morning, if I put a title on the message, what are you speaking about yourself? I had another message, but God had changed it. Amen. Early this morning. Amen. What are you saying about your children? What are you saying about your marriage? What are you saying about your grandchildren? What are you saying about your finances? What are you saying about your life? And what's coming out of your mouth? And amen. Sometimes we just, amen. I see somebody have a hell dog go in the car, going down the road. You couldn't see his face because his lips are flapping up and down. But that's how we are sometimes by running our mouths. Our lips are just flapping on down the mouth. James says, if anyone does not offend his speech, neither say the wrong thing, he is fully developed character and a perfect man, able to control his whole body and to curve, amen, his entire nature. Despite what you may think, does matter, and I want you to listen very closely, it does matter to you and to your well-being as James pointed out in this verse. Words are very important, amen, and powerful. What you say about yourself, about your sickness, about your health, or whatever you might be facing in your life. Well, I guess, Mama, how did I got it? Well, I guess you will because you just confessed it with that flapping mouth. And we'll be held responsible for them just as Jesus warns us in Matthew 12 and verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That's why each of us need, amen, to learn to tame our tongue. Amen. You said, Brother Pruitt, it's hard to do. I swear if you don't allow God to help you, it is a hard thing. Give the Lord a great big hand. 
I believe it's verse 4, chapter 3. Behold also the ships which though they be so great, great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hymn whatsoever the governor listens. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire can and a tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is a tongue among our members. So it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. It is set on fire of hell. And every kind of beast of the birds of the amen of serpents and the things of the sea is tamed, have been tamed of mankind. God had her too. Amen. Rebuked me not too long ago, maybe a couple months ago. Learning my phone, I looked at preachers and had a guy on there just blasting every preacher and all the money they made and what they spend it on and everything else. And I even began to mention it myself. And God said, Who made you judge? Oh, Hello. And I'm sitting there saying, Who was that? Like I didn't know who it was. <laughs> I knew who it was. God said, Remember, when you judge, somebody's judging you. Right. Right. Hello? Amen. Regardless of the other preachers or whatever they come on the news, that's between them and God, and God will handle their situation. Did you hear me? But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil and fully a deadly poison. And I wouldn't want to be one of the tattletales that mentions in the Word of God. I wouldn't want to be the one who's got a loose tongue on the gospel about everybody pick up the phone. Amen. They said he a phone is an evil instrument. It's only evil when you use it for evil. Hello? Come on. God will let that tell the truth. God just tells me to preach it. No man can tame the tongue, not by himself. And verse 8, James states that the tongue is undisciplined. Anything undisciplined will be wild and uncontrollable. Always wanting to do its own thing. A child is that way, so is a wild animal. So is an appetite. The human tongue is no different. That's why we need the help of the Holy Ghost to control our tongue. Amen. But God will not do it all for us. We must learn to discipline our mouths and take responsibility for what comes out of them. Yes. You can make your excuse all you want. Well, if I thought it, I might as well say it. Who would have thought of that stupid saying? I don't know. A lot of times it's best if it comes in your head. You better sit there and pray and ponder on that thing. Say, God, don't let me speak anything or reproach on the church or reproach on my brothers or my sisters or, or my family. Glory to God. Help me pray about it. Help me. Amen. And make a difference. I was going to preach the revelation this morning. Amen. Glory to God. She's well, well preacher must have got a phone call this morning. No, I haven't, I haven't had a phone call the last two, three seconds. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but God moved me in my spirit and said, if they don't watch what they say, they're going to get what they don't want. Right. Did you hear me? Right. If we get what we say, a lot of times we deserve it. A lot of times we're going to wish, man, you're talking about eating your words. You eat them. Did you hear me? Regardless if you're right or wrong, God, if you let God lead you by His Spirit, He would do. But we, we take it upon ourselves and say, I know that. I, 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 God's leading me. No. If it brings confusion and division, it is of the devil and not of God. It don't make no difference. 
From the pulpit to the front door to the side door, back door, whatever you want to say, it's for every one of us this morning. Did you hear that? To have your spiritual pitchfork, just throw it down and say, God, get a hold of me. Get a hold of my mouth. Amen. Be like Isaiah. Lord, cleanse my mouth. Because I'm a man of unclean lips. Without God, you cannot change anything. Matthew 17 and verse 20 in Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible with you. Let me say it one more time, Matthew 17 and verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, reason they couldn't cast out the demon. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Most, most of us don't use our mouth. Shut my mouth, Lord. Most of us don't use our mouth at all for what God gave it to us for. Therefore, it is a great power and authority in words. You've got to watch what you say. The kind of power depends on the kind of words. We can, we can curse our future by speaking evil of it, or we can bless it by speaking well of it. Us is speaking well about our future. Oh, is it gloom and doom? Oh, my goodness, I ain't going to make it. I can't do this. You're right, we can't do nothing without Him. But with Him, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Help us, Lord, to speak good and well about the future of our households, our children's 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 children. Help me, Lord, to God to speak good about my health. Thank you, Lord, for I'm able to get up this morning and I can walk, I can eat. Thank you, Lord, I can breathe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me thank you. Number two, our future cannot be blessed 
until we let go of the past. Amen. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Our future cannot be blessed until we let go of the past. Hmm. It cried on that one. It really cried. In the time that we're living in, in the promised times, don't miss Jesus. Did you hear me? Don't miss him. I think it's Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. No matter how dry you think you are, he can make the rivers flow once again in your life. Did you hear me? But you cannot hang around and say to with the ones of blooms and dooms and, and go to God and say, it ain't no way God can forgive me. He'll forgive you of all your sins if you just stand him. Don't walk around and say, I ain't have no joy. I have no strength. I have no peace. Amen. Walk around and say, I got joy. I got peace. I got heaven. I got strength. My strength comes from him and nobody else. What would what would you say about yourself? Watch. Amen. The psalmist David said, I have encouraged myself. In the Lord. Yes. Sometimes you're looking for people to encourage you. You might as well forget you feel worse as you did with before you got there. And then you feel worse when you leave. But the Bible says, encourage yourself in the Lord. I'm not by myself. I've got somebody that will be there when nobody else will be there. Yes. Can't nobody carry your burdens and your troubles, but Jesus can. He'll be there. He said, cast all your cares upon the name, upon the Lord. He shall renew your strength if you just let him. What are you speaking about yourself? Some of you walking in this morning, some, amen, smile, some half smile. Oh. Oh, Imagine everybody's facing battles in their lives, but it's what we do with that battle. Amen. Some is probably so a whole lot worse than others. But I got news for you. Amen. Go to God. I begin to say, all is well with the Lord. And God's going to see me through this. God's going to deliver my love. God's going to heal them. God's going to save them. In Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, the Lord set forth this, this same principle. We can release the plans of God for our lives by no longer considering, thinking about the things of old. Believing that God has a great plan for our future. Even the past revivals that we've had. Great awakenings that were good, that were great. But we need a great awakening for ourselves. We can't keep looking back. God, come on, do a new thing. Help us, Lord, let the Holy Ghost infiltrate our lives. Come on. Think about the things of old, believing that God has a good plan for our future. Since what we think about eventually comes out of our mouths, we will never get our mouth, amen, straight out unless we do something about our thoughts. The battlefield's in our minds. The battlefield's right here. When God said, I'm going to save your house on you, and I said, you look at how bad they are. And you say, there ain't no way. Hello? Amen. But I got news for you. The worse it looks, the better God loves a seven free. Did 
you hear me? I don't care if they're the town drunk or the town honk. Amen. God can set the conscience free and mend the broken heart. Did you hear me? There ain't nothing that God cannot do. You just gotta believe. Believe in hell to Jesus. Town drunks made the best preachers, the best deacons there ever was. Did you hear me? Power requires responsibility that God has given to each and every one of us. God has given us power. Very little you see it working in the midst or in our homes. It is just in the four corners of the church. He blew them outside in the upper room. Did you hear me? They didn't stay in the upper room. But the Holy Ghost blew them out into the street. Why? Because it represents families. It represents communities. It represents nations. Of, amen. Go to God. It represents, amen, spread the gospel. The power. Amen. When Peter stood that day and 3,000 souls were added unto the church, where is our eagerness? Where is, amen, our zeal that, oh, amen, they made the sick out on the streets. Read the book of Acts. They lay the sick folk out in the streets uh, on couches, uh, just hoping that the shadow of Peter would heal them. Uh, all that went out with their last apostle. You've got to understand, it was 120. It wasn't just the 12 disciples. Uh, it was 120 people in the upper room, uh, and all was filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Did you hear that? What are you doing with your power that God has given to you, child of God? What are you doing with it? Are you just sitting around moping and groaning and complaining and bickering and everything else? Power requires responsibilities. Matthew 12 and verse 36, but I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account. Amen. There uh, in the day of judgment. Jesus taught that men would give one, one amen, and men will one day have to give an account for the words. Why? Because words are containers for power. They carry created or destructive power. We have to be careful. We all should have now and then. I understand that. I, but amen, glory to God. But as we grow closer to God, amen, we're going to say, God, help me not to speak this. Uh, amen, glory to God. I know the devil said, well, if you see in your mind, you might as well speak it. Uh, and see, that's the devil telling you to do that. I'm going to tell my brother I don't like him for one bit. <laughs> Hello? And then he's gone. Holy quiet. Should I say that again? Should I say that again? Should I clarify a little bit more on that? Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. How many times have we heard that? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. He might dish it out, but it's coming back for you to eat it. Hello? People thought that was foolish. Eating your own words, but a lot of times you do. That sounds like pure. That sounds like power to me. Anything we are given power, there must also be responsibility. When I first started passing, if I listened to everybody, what they said, I would. Wouldn't be where I'm at today. You're too young. You're 25. You don't mean you never pastor the church. It ain't no way you can pastor that church. I said, you're right. I, I can't, but I know who lives within me that can. Amen. Did you hear me? I made a lot of mistakes. 
a lot of mistakes being passionate. But glory to God. But I'm so glad God was there with me Amen. to help me. Amen. Did you hear me? Often people want power to play with. Not power to be responsible for. Right. But God won't allow that. What you say is struck down in the books. Revelation chapter 20, I think. Uh, the throne, great white throne. The books. You've got S at the end. The books are open. Then the Lamb Book of Life. Every other word you have said. I don't understand why the poor of my children won't get. Why they won't get delivered. We need to focus when we pray. Don't let our minds wander off. Focus when you pray. Focus and speak with authority and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My children, grandchildren, they're going to get saved whether they like it or not. Amen. They belong to God. And God's going to use them for His glory. Did you hear me? Some of the liberals that say, I just don't think I like that. <laughs> Time to speak of boldness. Yes. Amen. Like a lion that came back with the devil has stolen. Yes. Did you hear me? Mama shall be crying like they've never cried before. The children of mine God has blessed me with. They Life is in the Word. 
Mr. Sis comes back to the piano. There's too much mixture in our mouth. And he calls us just to operate with zero power. Amen. Men's mixing positive and negative does not equal power in God's economy. Amen. It might work with your battery on the car, but it don't work with God. You can't be positive one minute and negative the next. Oh, we're quiet. You must believe your bad way. <laughs> the word of God coming out of the mind of the believer's mouth is a sharp sword against the enemy. Amen. That sharp sword is the word of God in Hebrews 4 and 12. Why do we allow the enemy to deceive us and to fool us? And yet in our time that we're living in, there's a very deceiving spirit that is deceiving. Trying to deceive. Trying to lie. Amen. He's not hiding no more. Amen. You can lie and deceive all you want. There's coming a pain day. There's coming a day. And I wouldn't be in your shoes for nothing unless you repent and make that thing right to me. The power of the church is the church has got to focus on God. In the home life, it's not in the four corners of the church right now. We're just meeting one time on Sunday morning and that's it. What are you saying outside of the church? Is it life? You said, Brother Brooks, I ain't got a holiday in there. God's not nervous, neither. But blood and compassion, glory to God, I can't help it. Comes to that scripture, he says, lift your voice like a trumpet and tell the people their transgression. I believe it's Isaiah chapter 46 verse 19 remember the former things of old for I am God and there is none else I am God and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the times that are not yet done said my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure Declaring the end from the beginning. The Lord is saying, I am the same God who has helped you in the past. I will declare the beginning and how it will turn out in the end. The Lord is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Revelation 1 and 8. He is also everything in between. He knows before trouble ever shows up that we can be victorious if we fight. The battle is His way. His way is not the negative way. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Give the Lord a great we can. I think it's Romans 8 and 37 says that we are more than conquerors. I believe that means that we can know before the battle even begins that we will win. In other words, we can see the end from the beginning. Amen. When we speak, Amen. Our future is literally declaring in the beginning what will happen in the end. I don't know about you, but I'm not going down. I'm going up. Come on, church. Come on. How can me and you walk with God? Ain't this three and three? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Bringing your mouth into agreement with God and begin to walk in victory. Oh, it is quiet. But that's fine. That means you're listening. 
How can we walk unless we agree? How can you sit there, Brother Brewer, stand there, Brother Brewer, and say, Amen, when I'm looking at the table, and my loved ones are bleeding? We're winners either way. If you're a child of God, we're winners. If we stay, if we go, we're winners. Amen. But get there, sit there, and begin to say, All is well with my soul. And go to God and pray. No, don't come to me if I'm sick. And you pray and say, oh, God, I'm very so this old wretched boy. <laughs> oh, we know you get ready to kick the bucket. I need somebody come and tell me I'm getting ready to kick the bucket. <laughs> when I was in the hot bath, I was going for two to three weeks with a broken neck. Make a long story short, a woman come in there and was looking and buying a house that I eat, that's the time. And she came, boy, she didn't want to lose that cell. She came up and she says, Oh, you look rough. <laughs> I'm in the hospital! <laughs> I, I don't look well. <laughs> Hair sticking up, hand shaved. Speak well about your situation. Amen. Do not allow the enemy to bring you in depression and thinking, well, that's where it's going to be. We hold our own destiny in the hands of God. I don't know about you. I'm going to fight to the end. Yes. I'm going to fight each and every which way. But I'm going to look to see the lights of that city. How about you? Amen. Let's all shame. Give the Lord a great big hand.